Today we're here to work with uh, Marge Gibson and her staff with Reggie to release rehabilitated eagles. Um, but we're also here to acknowledge the contributions that many people have made, in part because it is such a celebratory event to release these rehabilitated eagles. And, and it allows us to think back to what does it take to get conservation done. And when we release these birds, we're releasing a way of communicating to higher beings, to uh, spirits, to God, to however we perceive that to be. And in that celebration, we bring together members of Fairy Bluff Eagle Council, um, members of the public, to acknowledge some of the work that's being done. And so we also wish, while we're re releasing these rehabilitated birds, to also recognize the contributions of members of Fairy Bluff Eagle Council who have passed. So we have uh, three bald eagles that are in carriers that'll be released from carriers. Uh, one is a five-year-old female. She's from Lilly, Wisconsin, and she was hit by a car. Uh, we see a lot of birds hit by cars. Often they're feeding on deer carcasses, and uh, often it's on a curve because that's where the animal gets hit itself and then they become hit um, because they can't get off the ground fast enough to get away from a car. And she had a broken leg. Broken legs are really difficult for um, bald eagles because they need their legs and they have to be 100% when they leave us. So that's the important thing. And I think in general, wildlife rehabilitation is a lot different than people think it is. Um, when they leave us, they have to be 100%. They have to be in perfect feather. They have to be in perfect weight. They have to be perfect all over because not only are they going out to fly, but they're going out to survive. They have to defend themselves from their own species and others. And they have to be perfect. In the wild, if you're not perfect, you don't survive. And that's uh, a problem um, if you release them before they're really flight worthy. Our birds, when they come out of the box, are very strong. They've been in a big flight conditioning area for 110 feet, 28 foot high ceilings, um, and they are there until they're released. So um, they're very strong. Now that, that'll be the first one. She's five. She doesn't have a full white, white feathers. Um, our world in rehabilitation has to adapt to what's going on in their world. And as we have more bald eagles in our area, they aren't needed in the breeding population as quickly. So they don't mature as quickly. Um, their world is pretty perfect. They adapt uh, to their surroundings much better than, than, for instance, we would, I think. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting, but uh, we do see these differences. The, the three-year-old, we have a three-year-old from Green Lake, and it's a male, and he was caught up in fishing line, fishing line entanglements. Um, this is a problem, and often those fishing lines have lead sinkers on them. So if they swallow it, or they get it caught up, uh, they usually don't make it without surgery. Um, so that's another issue of lead poisoning. The fishing line itself is a problem, and we often get um, birds in that are wrapped in fishing line, chicks in the nest, mom and dad you know, bring a, a fish there and it has, happened to have line on it, and it, they get it entangled in the babies. So um, that's just another issue of pick up after yourself. You know, if, you're, if you're a fisherman, um, you know, please look after yourself because the wild, wildlife can't extricate themselves from monofilament line. It's really strong. Good news, it's really strong for fishing. Bad news, it's really strong if anything else gets tangled. Uh, we have a western Wisconsin, which is Wausau, and he was shot. Um, we do see a lot of shootings. Uh, there's no excuse for it. Trumpeter swans shot thinking they were geese. I don't know. That's quite a big difference to me. But so, does anybody have any questions about anything? Yeah. 
Are they shot by accident? It's hard for me to think a bald eagle shot by accident. I mean, look at the back of your dollar bill, white head, white tail, just saying, that big. Um, no, we see a lot more illegal activity uh, of all kinds, and that's concerning in our society. We don't have many prosecutions in our state, if at all. Uh, I think it's been about a dozen years since we've had a prosecution. So um, I think that, you know, we, it's, there's a multifaceted problem going on. We need more, um, more law enforcement on it. And we need people, uh, the public tend to know something and they tend not to say something. And uh, that really has to quit because we're all, we're all in this together. This female, she is really impatient to go. We're impatient to have her go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, I told you. <laughs> uh, she is uh, really frustrated. She has been, unfortunately, in a smaller cage since the 19th. Uh, we had a, a, a little issue with, uh, with the state uh, um, approving the, the release. So anyway, so we're going to release her now. Um, she's, everybody send your best with her. She's come through so much. We did not think this one was going to survive. And the fact that she did is a testament to my, my staff too. And, uh, and we're really grateful. So let's go. One, two, three. <laughs> Take care, big girl. <laughs> she weighs almost 14 pounds. Big woman. 11 months. She was with us 11 months. And that's the other thing. I think that, you know, we, um, uh, we can't let them go until they're ready. And our work has changed since their population has grown. For instance, we release here. Um, normally we could release almost anywhere in the state, but we can't now because of breeding territories. And they're very defensive at breeding territories. So, you know, we're, uh, we have had to adapt to their world, which is important. Fish and wildlife uh, no longer uh, will allow tagging to be done on rehabilitated birds, and, but, you're, but I wish we could. We could learn so much more about even our, our own techniques, if they, if they work or not, or whatever. So I think it's really important. However, uh, it's a federal issue. This one was a fishing line entanglement, and he is three years old. He's from Green Lake, and he's been with us just a few months. One, two, three. Good luck, buddy. Stay away from fishing line, eh? Beautiful. <laughs> it's like, hey. <laughs> so wonderful to see them in, uh, in flight again. Um, Now, one of the things that happens, and I, and I want to warn you, is, is that sometimes they go down and take a bath right away. Now, they're not drowning. Eagles can swim. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It's sort of a rite of passage. I don't know why they do it, but they often do. Look at it. Look at her. So happy. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> I wish Katie was here to see him. Hey. That's, that's a greeting committee, not so much. It's like, quit playing. Just go sit in a tree. Adult. When they leave our arms or when they leave the box, they have to be 100%, as I've said before. And it's really important uh, that they be able to, to fly and to fly for a long time, to defend themselves, not only to, to catch food, but to do whatever, whatever is necessary for their natural life. Now, this is a two-year-old that was shot in Weston. Uh, I do have the x-rays, uh, pictures of the x-rays, and you can see the went right through the chest and uh, lodged in the ribs on the other side. One, two, 
<laughs> He's like, yes. <laughs> Take care, sweet boy. We're going to uh, get the one in arm. He had lead poisoning. <clears throat> and in fact, we did check him uh, several days ago, and uh, we, we did do more treatments. In fact, this morning was his last treatment. Uh, sometimes, shh, shh, shh. can we talk for a moment? Let's talk for a moment, okay? You're okay, you're okay. I know, you're all right, honey. It's okay, we're gonna talk. We're just gonna talk for a moment, okay? Look at out there. That's your oyster, my dear. All right. Lead poisoning is something that we see a whole lot of, unfortunately. Um, People still use lead ammunition, uh, no idea why. Other things are available, and it also affects your own family. Um, this is an amazing male bald eagle. He uh, doesn't have quite his full color yet. Again, he is about five years old, five to six years old. We find that they're getting uh, maturity at about seven now, maybe a little later. So he is a, an adult, probably may not breed this year, but we will see. I guess we won't see. He'll know, we won't know. Uh, he came in with critical levels of lead poisoning, which uh, is very, very difficult. Very difficult for them. And uh, it's an arduous process for our staff as well. Very expensive too. Um, it's uh, the six cc's of uh, uh, calcium EDTA, which is a medication that they're given twice a day injections um, to chelate the lead from their blood, which is stored in their bones. So it's a complicated, complicated process. Uh, it has to be, um, uh, you know, everything that we do is, um, we learn from them. But uh, lead is a very, very serious situation and it works on their body, it works on their heart, it works on the, every organ that they have. They can go into multi-organ failure and often do. Without coming into rehab, they would not live. And uh, we do about 100 eagles a year now at Raptor Education Group, and about a third of them are lead poisoning. So it's a serious problem. We have to get smarter as humans. He is a male. Males are smaller than females by about a third. I'm just gonna open your wing, honey. Don't worry about it, okay? No worries. No worries. And one of the reasons why we're gathered here is that, you know, it's, it's impressive, it's exciting to watch these birds release back into the wild. But I think that this, this um, deep set feelings that we have about seeing a bird um, being released back into the wild is more deeper than that. And that people have for centuries have um, recognized the value of these incredible species as they are released um, back to their environs, to the sky. Um, Arch Goni was wanting to be here and wasn't able to make it. But one of the things that I've learned from Art is that the importance of uh, an eagle being a portal of abilities for people, um, tribal members in the Menominee tribe to communicate with um, upper their spirits or the deities that are in the sky is, is incredibly important. And this is a worldwide sort of thing in that cranes carry the soul, the virtuous to heaven in Vietnam, the SARS cranes do. And so this link between people and the things that we cannot understand or our spirits or the deities, it's, it's a very strong connection. The, and so when we're gathering here together, we're gathering to celebrate these released birds and the great work that Reggie does with um, Audrey and Marge here today, but all of their staff. But we're also gathering here to remember the great work that other members of Fairy Bluff Eagle Council um, have done in the past, and in particular two people who have passed um, uh, in this past year. Petty Barrett, 
uh, and Carrie Rorty, our members that were involved with uh, Ferry Bluff for decades, and uh, unfortunately, they're no longer with us. But in the belief that um, our souls are carried to the heaven um, and um, is a great opportunity for us to remember what they did and to recognize the contributions that they've made for conservation and also to illustrate what our engagement in conservation can really mean. Um, and that is not just be what Penny and, and Kay did, but it's what all of us can do, members of Ferry Bluff Eagle Council, but all of us who are here today um, can each engage and do something for conservation. So I'm going to uh, walk over to the side. I'm gonna wait for him to get used to what he's, what he's seeing and get comfortable with it. And, uh, and then we'll do a quick count of three and I'll release him, okay? I know. This is your last chance to see people this close. I don't want to see you in the clinic again. No. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is one last time for you to see these folks. That's your future, baby. This is your past. Are you ready? Look, look. I know that's a go. Holy macaroni. I usually know when he's focused on the out, uh, he's focused across, but he's not. He's still, he's still a little concerned about what's going on. Look out there, it's out there. That's your future, baby. There you go. Okay, one, two, Three. Take care, buddy. Oh, good. Yeah, I see him. Did you see him? Do you see him in the land? Yeah, yeah. He's up on top. It's always amazing to release them back to the wild. This is where they belong. People always wonder if it makes us sad. No, not at all. Uh, this is what we do it for, and uh, this is where they belong. Um, so people always wonder too, why are they calm in our hands? Um, they, uh, they're, they're perfect predators. They also know when they're safe and they're amazing at evaluating their own environment. And uh, that is what they, they feed off. They're not sedated, we never sedate our birds in any way. So um, this is what they're like. And it's amazing for me to be able to show people what they are like, you know, uh, without, without uh, our interference. Um, we have an amazing staff. We only have five people, uh, same five people that we've had for a long time. Katie Helen, Katie Ethan, Raven Holloman, and Brad Baum are our rehabilitation staff. Right, and Audrey and me, so. We're kind of a tight group. <laughs> we do a lot of work. Um, people were laughing because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't get days off, I don't. So sometimes I forget if it's Saturday or whatever, and uh, but it's because I don't have any breaks, <laughs> right? <laughs> we let her have a day off once in a while. <laughs> anyway, so I have so much to say about lead poisoning. To be honest though, Sumner, we stopped doing a lot of education because it doesn't seem to be helping. And it, it um, I think that you know there are those that 
will never believe about lead poisoning, and uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, but it's it's not uh, it's gone past scientific reason now, and it's simply a political issue. Uh, and you can't change people's minds if it's if there's no nothing solid that you can argue against. So it's uh, it's unfortunate. Um, but uh, I hope someday, you know, people on their own will realize that it's for their own family's health as well and, uh, and make a change. Um, you know, even in our own, our own society, it causes um, um, brain damage, you know, in children especially. Um, ADHD, um, aggressive behavior, and uh, the th kinds of things that, are, that unfortunately we see in our society. And uh, it's not right for children to grow up with that. We, the public, is incredibly important to the success of wild ones. And uh, almost everything we see, 90, 95% of what we see, are human-caused issues. And whether that's shooting, or whether that's lead poisoning, or whether it's organophosphate poisoning, um, or uh, fishing line entanglement, um, or even being hit by cars, as a society, we just need to become more aware and uh, realize that we, everyone, is important. It's not just people in a rehab setting or the DNR. Um, it's everyone's responsibility. And that is, um, that's important for everyone to know. Um, you matter, you know, a, a member of the public, you matter. Um, the way we teach our children matters. Um, you teach them good ethics and, uh, and to be responsible. And I think with that, you know, there's, you know, people always say, well, you know, maybe it's something, uh, a, a, uh, maybe there's a disease going around, that's why you're so busy. No, it's 90, 95% human cause uh, across species, everything. So we just need to be more responsible and uh, to do the right thing. Actually, the alternative is, is a full copper bullet. Uh, it is a little more expensive, but uh, in the states that have outlawed lead, you know, they, the prices have gone down, you know, supply and demand sort of thing. Um, and, it, and it will go down. Uh, the, other, the problem is, is, is that, you know, while it costs maybe a dollar a bullet more, um, to chelate a bird like that one was 11 months with us, um, and just the medications alone were over $1,000. And then, you know, doing the, the staff time and then doing the rehab and feeding him for 11 months, you know, was, um, you know, it's very expensive. We don't get state or federal funding. So it's all, we're all nonprofit. So, um, and we do 100 eagles a year and uh, a full, you know, quarter to a third of them are lead poisoning. So it's very expensive. and. Um, so who is going to who's going to shoulder the cost? Is it going to be a rehab center, or um, you know, is it going to be people paying a buck a buck more a bullet? Um, hunting is very expensive, no matter which way you look at it. Um, it's a sport, and uh, I would choose to have it to be the safest um, the safest meat possible for my family. In fact, I did choose that. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, there's, I don't know why, because uh, it doesn't make sense to me. If you have a logical mind, it doesn't. But um, it's just the way it is. But there's a lot of things that we can do that are better, just to become more aware of our own activities and to become more aware of um, how incredible they are and what they add to our world um, and be grateful for that. Uh, Raptor Education Group is a nonprofit organization, so any donations are fully tax deductible, and we would greatly, greatly appreciate donations. Um, we, our, our workload increases yearly, and after COVID, a lot of facilities closed down, so our workload has over doubled what we used to do. So we're pretty much open, you know, around the clock, and uh, um, if it's a if it's an urgent emergency. And we work closely with sheriff's departments, police departments, you know, law enforcement of all kinds, and uh, and people um, know where to bring them. So, you know, we we do our very best to get everyone cared for, 
and get them back out if possible. Um, sometimes we place them in, in great facilities. Um, we had a sandhill crane that was an imprint that just went to Penn State. <laughs> she's, she's in college now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's, if it's an educational placement, that's really important too. Cooperation amongst all these different um, conservation groups, hunters and Fairy Bluff Eagle Council and Reggie and other groups um, um, is a really critical component. So there's lots of ways that people can involve um, themselves in conservation, whatever fits their needs. So local groups like Fairy Bluff or our rehabilitation groups like um, uh, Reggie or lots of other groups or even just being engaged with your hunting communities to find out ways that um, conservation can continue to be advanced um, uh, as people engage. You know, conservation is this wonderful thing because there's, uh, we can contribute in, in any ways that we have skills and we all have skills. So, uh, and Penny and Kay are great examples. They're two strong women who were deeply involved with Fairy Bluff Eagle Council, but in completely different ways. Kay is a past president for Fairy Bluff Eagle Council, and Penny kept our books. And Penny was not a person to go out at uh, 10 degrees below zero and count eagles coming in to roost. She was not interested in that. But she kept us financially stable and sound and, uh, in, in, and helped eagles by the counting that was done by others, and so she contributed in the way that she can contribute best. And Kay, at the same time, was very comfortable leading people, and so as our president, you can't be kind of shy and just doing your job keeping the books. You've gotta be out there and talking with people and, and motivating them to accomplish things for conservation and being organized and that sort of thing. And Kay, um, so she was not quiet, she was out there and really helped us to engage in um, conservation. And so even though the contributions, exact contributions that Kay and Penny made are so very different, they represent that gamut of different ways that people can um, engage in conservation that matches their own skills with the needs of any volunteer organization. And that's true for Ferry Bluff, but it's true for any of the organizations that many of you might be working um, with, you know, all nonprofit organizations have those same needs and they benefit from the contributions that you can make. Contact us through our website, which is fairybluffeaglecouncil.org, and fairy is F E R R Y, not F A I R Y. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, getting in, you know, contacting us through those means is real easy, and uh, we will try to respond and, and find out how you might be interested in helping and, and go from there. What did I tell you? They're like, it's like their own baptism. It's like, oh, cool. This is bigger than, this is bigger than the pond. <laughs> Whoa. And, but then she did a nice flight across yeah, here yeah. and flew back and landed on the shore. And he was in the tree below the, that other, I think it's another male. So yeah, what a what a special thing to be able to to get to witness, and uh, you know what an amazing 
thing. I was, I was there. I was able to, you know, be a part of that. And, uh, and those two eagles did, did swim for quite a while. They were in the water for quite a while and standing on the shore and uh, really, uh, really the thing neat is, things. Is so. people, um, people need to know that when the eagles are at our at Raptor Education Group, they're flying in a large flight building, and it's uh, you know 110 feet, um, 28 feet high, and they can do turns and they can do all those things, but they also get to know each other. And so the two eagles that came down, I mean that the adult I raised last, uh, was flying with the others, and as an adult, he has a little more status, you know, than the than the youngsters, and even than the five year old, and she was the one bathing with him. So um, they know each other, um, they recognize each other. Uh, in the case of foster parenting, which we, we have foster parents that raise orphan chicks, really, really important because they teach them everything they need to know about being an eagle. I can't teach them that. I mean, I, I can care about them, I can love them, I can feed them, I can provide fish, but I can't teach them their own language that needs the adult to do that, and they do, and they do, and that language changes over their lifetime, um, as ours does, as our children, you know, go from baby talk to, you know, to having words and sentences and, and you know, them being PhDs in front of you in, in 25 years or something. So uh, really, really important, and um, really wonderful to see them fly off. That's, uh, people always say, do you miss them? Oh. No, <laughs> I mean, we are so excited that they can go back and reclaim their life. So um, while we, we certainly wish them well, we actually never forget them. And we do 100 a year now, and you know, we've handled thousands, thousands of eagles. And as well as we do a thousand other birds in our facility too. So everything from you know, hummingbirds to you know, sandhill cranes and trumpeter swans and everything in between. Um, you know, come through our facility. And uh, we have releases for those too. It's not quite as dramatic. <laughs> we uh, just released a, a pine siskin and a junco the other day. And, you know, pine siskins weigh 15 grams. So we do the big and the little. Um, and uh, they are all important, but they're different. And uh, we, but we handle them in the same. We're, we're responsible for them. We do the best we can by using their own natural history to make sure we give them the right food, the right um, uh, habitat that they can get, get used to, and uh, to make sure they learn the correct um, manners, mannerisms, and the adults teach them that. Boy, do they. <laughs> Sometimes they get impatient with the chicks. <laughs> and see, see, that's the part I would, I would have a hard time doing. You know, a chick starts acting out and does some naughty things, like they're biting at each other. Of course, parents don't know anything about that, any, any, any species of parents. And uh, a couple of years ago, we had, a, we had 22 chicks because it was a big tornado year, and torn, you know, they were blowing down all over. And uh, so we put it in with our foster parents in the rearing chamber, and our foster parent uh, does, doesn't have full flight. They're birds that aren't releasable to the wild for one reason or another. And, uh, but, they're, but they're parents and they, you know, people always, well, won't they kill the babies? Why would they kill the babies? I mean, they're, they're extremely intelligent, much more so than you have any idea. And, you know, they recognize their baby, so they're gonna take care of them. And interestingly, the father's the best parent. Mom's great at sitting on those eggs. She's got a bigger body, and so she can accommodate the, the larger egg size. And she sits there, and he's better at hunting because he's smaller and he's more maneuverable. Um, and so after those eggs hatch, man, he's procuring food, he's a great dad, and at our facility, the males are the best, absolute best parents. We have females that go in and that are there, but you know, they're kind of like, you know, dad, can you deal with that kid? It's kind of, <laughs> kind of annoying. <laughs> and in fact, 
a couple of years ago, I started to say this, <clears throat> we had one male in with uh, several youngsters, and they're all different age groups, you have to understand, they're not from one, one, one nest. So we have some that are larger, some that are smaller, some that are pretty little, and he or they, or the adults, also protect the other chicks from chicks that might be sort of, you know, snotty. I could use different words, but my, my, my staff has taught me that I need to be good about that. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so we had one big female chick that was about as brazen as any chick I've ever seen. And she really thought, you know, adult, you know, she, she was grown, you know. It's, and so dad was up feeding, a, we have a raised uh, nest. So dad was up there feeding the chicks and the little ones. And she comes up and she's standing next to him. She kind of maneuvers herself a little bit. And remember, he doesn't have full flight. So he's missing part of one wing. And she comes up to him, bam, she hits him right in the belly. He falls over backwards and he lands on the, on the floor, you know, with his wings out backwards, backwards. And he's, he gets himself up and he dusts himself off. And I'm watching on a camera, not happy about what I saw. But again, not my business to go and correct that little eagle. She's got a parent in there. She has two, actually. The female on the, oh, while well, this was going on, was sitting on the other side of the cage and just like, yeah, not my DNA. I don't know, you know. <laughs> poor, poor choice of parenting. Anyway, so, um, but she's, and that's what females tend to do, and dad really takes care of a lot of it. Um, so, um, Bravo to all the dads in, in the audience because y'all are real important in rearing anything, including our own. Um, and anyway, so he gets up, dusts himself off, he jumps back up on the rear on the nest, and he's again just ignores her. He's feeding the babies, and he's got a little one in there that he's preening and taking care of. And uh, she gets over there, and she's like. You can tell when they start to walk. You know, eagles kind of walk like they got their pants full, sort of anyway. You know, because they, they're not they're not elegant in walk. They're elegant in the air. So she goes up to him, and she's sitting there, and he acts like he doesn't even notice. She's positioning herself in front of him, and bam, knocks him right in his, and he falls over backwards. She did it three times. So at this point, my late husband was watching too, and he was ready to go and get him, you know, get him out of the way because, I mean, first of all, he's a dad too. He's like, man, that kid needs. Anyway, so I said, just, you know, be patient. He'll, he'll deal with her. And he gets up. Dad gets up. He stumps to the edge of the, the nest, and he just acts like everything's cool. And she gets... In, and he positions himself so her back is to the edge of the nest. And bam, he knocks her over. She falls like a screaming, crying baby. Oh my God. And she, her wings are out and she's lying on the floor, you know, just crying and carrying on. He's looking at her. Now, we never heard any vocalizations pass. There's a lot of nonverbal communication in the natural world, and it is with eagles in this time. Uh, sometimes we do hear those little sounds, but not this time. He was looking down at her. She's laying there squalling, her wings out. He jumps on her chest. And I'm like, okay, well, he's, got, he's, he's it's his species. I can't make those decisions. Um, I know what I'd do if it was my little female daughter. But anyway, so he, he stands on her. Just stand, he doesn't hurt her. He doesn't dig in. He just stands in there looking at her. And he just stares at her face. And after a minute, she stops yelling. And I can't see her, by the way, because I'm watching on a camera. I can't see the whole thing, so I'm not sure what's going on. But I'm hoping that everything's cool. And he's just watching her. And then he gets up, 
jumps back on the nest and just ignores her, takes care of the chicks. She gets up and she, you know, sort of walks around like embarrassed. She should be. And then she jumps up on the nest and I'm like waiting. No, she was the most well-behaved chick <laughs> until she was released. She became a stellar member of their community. <sighs> he took care of it. Now me, if I'd seen that, I would say, well, she's just kind of a naughty girl and you know they're all different, because they are all different, just like our children, they're all different. Um, and uh, no, he took care of it and she got the message. There was no verbalizations, he didn't hit her heart, he, he stood on her. She was like, Whoa! she should have been. But totally, in fact, she helped take care of the kids. Yeah. She was one of the older ones. So still, but still a chick, still a, a, an eaglet. So anyway. Yeah, so we've got Marge for, for quite a little, little while yet, but okay. we want to hear from you. So what, what questions do you have? I've got a microphone, or you can shout out if you're comfortable doing that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the question was uh, if they're hit by lightning. Uh, it doesn't happen often, and in fact, if it does happen, we may not know about it because they have to come into us for us to be able to document it. Um, and, uh, you know, that was AMP, and AMP was just, it turned into be a foster dad, which was wonderful. Um, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't happen that often, but uh, that's one of the natural things that happen, and they're, they're kind of unusual. Any other questions? Yeah. How do we prevent them from imprinting on, hum on us? Yes, we don't raise the babies. Uh, in fact, you heard me talk about the, the camera. Uh, we drop food in through a slot. The adults take care of feeding them uh, before they're old enough to feed themselves. The adults teach them everything. Uh, we, in fact, we don't go in to clean a lot, and there's a good reason for that. Um, if, uh, if you remove everything and it looks like a uh, restaurant in there, they're not going to develop the, the uh, natural immunities that they need. Um, I've been in, in eagle nests when I was doing research, so you know, you cl climb into an eagle nest, and the, you know, they're not tidy. You know, they bring up food in there, and you know, it doesn't always get eaten and things happen to food that doesn't get eaten, that's meat. So um, uh, that's important for them because they have to develop uh, their immune system. And if you feed them only restaurant quality things and you know, wipe their face afterwards and you know, make sure that there's nothing dropped on the floor, uh, they're not going to be able to survive because in their world, it's important. And uh, we have to, make that adjustment from what we think is tidy and nice to what is natural for them, and we have to respect that. Any other questions? Yeah. We need to hold them, no, no, not absolutely not. I mean, uh, when we get a, an eagle in from the wild, I mean, they can be 20 years old. And so, you know, that imprinting happens when they're young. And that's a, uh, it's a change actually in the brain. Um, Conrad Lorenz did a lot of studies on ducks, you know, a long time ago about, you know, the baby can hear the, the adult's voice and so then follows it, which is really important in waterfowl especially. Um, but that imprinting stage lasts a different length of time for each species. And, uh, but it's always uh, until they leave the nest. And uh, we don't hand feed anybody. It has to do with feeding because they imprint on, you know, the adult feeding them. And we don't hand feed. Uh, we do drop food through a slot and they have an adult and the adult, the adult teaches them everything. I mean, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. 
um, the preening and the taking care of themselves is kind of natural. But you know, the adult comes along and you know sort of says, got something stuck here, you know how we do with our kids. And they're very similar to that, but in their way. So no, they're never imprinted on us. Um, imprinted birds do not survive in the wild. Uh, if you are an imprint, and you're, or if we have an imprint that's released to the wild, it may fly away, but its own species will kill it. Because, and this is important for people that raise geese and then drop them off and think they're gonna be wild. No, uh, they might be wild for a little bit. They'll chase after people, and then people will do things to them that, because it's a goose chasing them. And uh, anyway, so yeah, Randy. That is the beauty of releasing them here. Uh, one of the things is uh, they, the, the dam chops up fish and it's like sushi. So we release them where there's sushi. And uh, you know, the kids, uh, there's a dead fish or something, you know, they do know about dead game. We give them a, you know, a deer carcass or part of a deer carcass or you know, rabbits that have been hit by a car or squirrels that have been hit by a car. So they do know about, about game and wild game. We would never feed them something that, uh, like a rabbit that someone donates that has white fur, not ever, because that becomes their search image. And we, we won't do that. Um, so they learn while they're here, but after they're released, there's a lot of things floating alongside and the dam chops up those fish and that's available to them and they don't have to f catch it. But they're pretty quick at learning. They're pretty quick. And when we release them with adults that they know, and I always do that, um, the last ones were all released as immature, as the last group. However, there were adults out there that we have released that knew them in captivity. And uh, so it becomes a very much a family thing. I don't know if you remember, Randy, but several years ago, I released, a, an, a, I, released some, a, I released an adult first, and it went and sat in the tree on the side for a bit. And then I released youngsters. And the youngsters, um, one of them started heading straight down towards Sauk City, down the river. And that adult went out and corralled it and got in front of it and just as if it was a lasso and brought it back. So, you know, they know each other. That's the beauty of it. Their society is really tight. Uh, I was just wondering, so I know there's um, a lot of like federal legislation protecting eagles, um, and I was just curious if there's anything specific to our state that's being done as well, or if it's mostly just federal protection. Um, well, there was a lot of federal protection. I think that what we've seen um, in, our, in, in our government is, is that there's been, uh, there's a less uh, support for state and federal governments. Um, and that's a matter of voting, you know, unfortunately. And a wildlife doesn't vote, we do. So you have to think about what's gonna happen to them. So if there's, uh, policies are cut that protect wildlife, that's not a benefit to us because in fact, you know, it, it affects them. And I think we have to continue to keep that in mind uh, whenever we vote. And it's not only our state, um, but, uh, but a lot of it's our state, yeah. Um, but when they cut, they cut costs, that's what happens. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, but they are protected by the, by US, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. That's part of it, is, is that uh, the federal uh, government, that, that program was cut or was, was 
not defunded, but, but close to it. So they no longer have people that can follow them or it takes more people to follow the bands when they're banded and get that out. So there's a, it's, it's a, co a cost cut thing, yeah. And it is unfortunate. Uh, I would like to, I mean, we could, we could you know, put, put um, trackers in them, but very, very expensive. And then you have to follow them, which is also very expensive. And the, as a nonprofit, you know, we, we don't get state or federal funds. We, uh, we're grateful that we get uh, salmon donated to us um, in, in the fall, and that's about uh, 4,500 pounds. But we were out with, we had 32 bald eagles getting ready to go. So they eat a lot. We also have pelicans. We do pelicans, swans, and I have one goose that eats fish. She had lead poisoning, uh, and uh, she, uh, her, her, um, Body has changed, and so she now eats meat. On the, on the tagging, I understand about the taking away the funds. Uh, I think that might have answered my question, but I was going to say, is there any tagging you could do yourself here? Well, we could. I mean, can we ban? We can't because they're federal birds. We can't put on our own ban, no. Um, however, we could, um, you know, we could put a through a research program, we could put in, uh, you know, a, a device or a tracker of some sort, but those are extremely expensive. Uh, we have done some of that after West Nile virus in 2006, 2008 sort of thing, but um, uh, even the, the tracking, you know, uh, is like $1,000 a month, so we, we, we can't do that. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't get paid, I've never been paid, so it's just, you know, my, my passion. And uh, I just feel it's like what I can give back. Where is your uh, Antigo, up in Antigo. So we're three hours from here. <laughs> so when we come down to release eagles, or today I left at six, so anyway. But yeah, it's, uh, but this is the best place in the state to release them. And you're inc incredibly lucky to be here and to have, you know, Fairy Bluff here and doing the Eagle Days presentation. Education is one of the most important things I do, really. Um, and when people come to see the Eagles released, they get an idea of how amazing they are. Um, I do hold them in my arm and, and someone asked, no, they don't bite. Uh, but they actually, they, they evaluate their environment. You know how, you know, in our society, if, if you, you know, see somebody that kind of makes your, your skin crawl, it's inappropriate now to, you know, to avoid them. Uh, in their world, it's clear cut. It's survival of the fittest, and that's what they do. And when I'm holding them, they're an adult. I mean, they're an adult, and you know, coming in, you know, I, I use my voice a lot. Uh, they don't understand my language, but they understand the intent. Uh, almost as much as, you know, if, if you go up to someone and say, you know, hey, how you doing sort of thing, that's a different message than if you grab somebody and you, you know, and you, you know, use force tactics. We never use force. And they respond. Yep. Hi, a, a, first of all, a quick oh, thank you. And a quick thank you and two quick questions. Um, at Riverwood and the Dells, we had three eaglets this year and you came to our rescue. Right after Memorial Day, we had no idea what to do with this eagle that fell 75 feet from the tree. So thank you very much. And um, that was one of the. It was which, released. Yeah, it was released yes. the 31st. Yeah. Yes. yes. So we're yes. very grateful. My questions are twofold because this is what I get asked, and we have a senior living facility there, and they're very um, bonded with these eagles, and they're starting to nest again. But my first question is, how far when you release them here do the young ones go to establish their new territories? Do we know that? And secondly, we'd like to do something to help you. So how could we help you? And would you come to the Dells and do a program? Um, several things you got in there. Uh, so yes, your eagle it was released. And he was raised with the others. So he, he did well, really well. He, he just got some new siblings. And you know everything was cool. Um, Yes, we will come to the Dells to do a program. Um, 
And uh, I can't promise that I'll be the only one, and we won't probably bring an eagle because our traveling education is more about more broad based than that. But uh, give us a call and uh, or you know send a note or something, and we can do. It. Send me an email. We can we can arrange that. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, funds. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing for us. It's uh, incredibly expensive. And I'm, I, I have a very, very small staff. Up in Antigo, we don't have many volunteers. We have volunteer transporters, but people say, oh, all your, your volunteers are where, we don't have volunteers, they're all biologists. And uh, biologists, avian ecologists, environmental educators, so, you know, they're not volunteers. Um, but they work hard. And uh, right now, you know, we got 300 plus patients at home, and I've only got two staff on the weekend. So me leaving was kind of a big thing, you're like, <laughs> you know, anyway. But we are getting another group of eagles ready to go. So they have to leave really soon because nesting has started. So we're really pushing them. And uh, what was the other question? I forget. Where do they go? Okay. We have, uh, we have in the past done a tracking, uh, telemetry. And it's been a number of years ago, but one of them, this is really interesting, we released a, a, a four-year-old here, and he wasn't quite a full adult. And the next day, he showed up uh, in Illinois on the Des Plaines River. Uh, and then, and then, everybody was like, wow, where's he going? You know, maybe that was his natal area, maybe that's where he was hatched, we don't know, uh, down there, or maybe he had experience down there in another winter. Um, the next day it was Madison on Lake Mendota. And we thought, okay, the tracker's gone bananas. No. He, he had, was a bird that had recovered from West Nile virus. And uh, I, I misspoke, he was four, he wasn't five. So he would still have a lot of little brown feathers on him too. And he, uh, three weeks later, was up in Canada I think he liked Canadian hens or something, I don't know. And he was up there and spent, you know, a month in, in uh, Alberta. I don't know. Then, but he was originally, we think, from Stevens Point because he came back and he uh, came back to Stevens Point and he nested in Petenwell and had a lovely, we don't know if she was Canadian. <laughs> Immigration didn't have a part of it, but she might have been. So they fly a long ways. And, uh, you know, we have, once they're out of my hands, uh, they're on their own, and they know where they're going. Often the chicks come back to their natal area, the, the nest that they were hatched in. Sometimes chicks help the adults raise the other babies. They're not, they're not ter terribly close to them, but we had one that was uh, transmitted from um, Upper Michigan. And uh, he'd fallen from the nest and came to us and actually had West Nile virus, was recovered, and uh, or she, it was a female, and she it was on an island um, near Escanaba. And uh, the residents watched, and of course that bird was telemetry so we could tell who it was. And he would go in and, you know, be close to the nest and wasn't being chased off. And everyone was wondering why was this eaglet not being chased? Because it should have been. It's their kid. It's their kid. That one uh, took over a nesting pair. We lost, they lost a female at a nest and that female slid in when she was four years old, which is pretty much unheard of in the eagle society, and became the female at that nest. So not only did she recover, she went to school in Antigo and <laughs> became a, uh, you know, a, super, a super female and, and before she should have been. So she was chosen, which doesn't usually happen, chosen into to a female role. We got a we got a question here. Yeah. What do you What's need? Storm. Do they live all over the world? Do what? Do they live all over the world? Do they live all over the world? Different kinds of eagles live all over the world. Yes. Um, bald eagles live in in North America and in the United States and Canada. 
but different kinds of eagles live all over the world. Yep. They're really amazing, huh? Big. I like your face painting. You got one too. That's that so a cute. Really, that's a chick. That's a good question. <laughs> what a, got yeah. Time for a few more questions? Yep. Oh. Do you think these birds are here Okay, this is a net. The reason that, that Fairy Bluff is here and the reason that you have eagles here is it's a natural wintering area. In the winter, they all come down, they're all on vacation. I mean, they're not, they're not worried about their nests or their mates or whatever, because they're, they're on vacation, you know? And uh, so there's a lot of good food here, and I suspect there was before the dam, but uh, the dam has, has created a, it's warmer, and it keeps, keeps the water open, and uh, you know, so it's a, good, it's a good place for them. And they chop up fish for the kids, so there's sushi. I like sushi myself. For wind, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great wintering area. It was before the dam came, um, so it was before. But you know, it's uh, it's a little bit warmer than way up north, um, and it's uh, the, if the water stays open, that's a plus. But uh, it's it's a beautiful habitat for them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we got another question over here. Yep. I have two questions. My first one is, what if the lake froze, what other resources do they have? I'm sorry, what? If the lake freezes. Oh, the lake the freezes. If the river freezes, what, what other well, resources? Well, they, um, they, they do eat. Now, now, we think about as eagles as eating fish, right? And fishing. And they do. But when I used to work with the California condors, we used to call the bald eagles white-headed vultures because they like to scavenge. They like to eat dead things. So they're kind of big vultures in a way. So if someone, um, an animal should die in the woods or someone um, shoots a, a, a deer or, or harvests a, another animal and only takes part of it and leaves it there, they will find it and they will eat it. Okay, so they, they really, that's why they get hit by cars because if a deer gets hit by a car, you know, they go down and start to, to dine on it. You had another question? Yes. My other question is, how do you think the eagles react when you release them? They're really excited. I hold them so I can see their reaction. Um, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, nonverbal communication with me and them, as a matter of fact. And so I wait until they really focus on it, um, fo focus on where they're going. So I just don't throw them out and they don't know what's going on. Um, and uh, one, the last one that we released, hand released, uh, on the 6th, I think, the 6th of January, she, um, she was ready, ready to go, and then she turned and started looking at the audience again, and she wouldn't pay attention to where I was gonna put her. So I turned her around and she watched for a while. I don't know why, I mean, that I don't know, but there was something of interest there that she needed to, figure out before she went. And they tend to be kind of curious about people. Um, and uh, you know, so they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're really intelligent, curious. And uh, when I take them out of the box, they're not tame. We, they're not sedated. People think they're sedated, no. They just can feel um, our intention. Now, that doesn't mean you should go pick up eagles in the wild if you haven't been trained. Yeah, Randy? Oh, thank you, Randy. You too. This is the man that flew up and got the, uh, the trumpeter swan eggs so we could have trumpeter swans in our state again. He and Sumner Madison. And I got to tell you, um, that's an amazing gift. So thank you. Yeah, I get the sick ones. Yeah, geez, thanks, Randy. Now I got the sick ones. We didn't have any. <laughs> right, I think we just got time for a couple more yeah. more questions.
You know, I think that anytime you have a you have a, a something big, you know, man-made, there's probably negatives. But you know, from my personal point of view of releasing eagles, uh, it's good for the chicks. It's good for the youngsters, and probably has has contributed to the uh, allowing uh, maybe chicks that weren't going to be so great at fishing to accommodate. Maybe I don't know that. That's not scientific. That's just my. I just know from my my chicks that I release. And um, we did, on a, a study that was done, um, our chicks, uh, they trapped, I think, uh, eight uh, or six uh, wild eaglets, and we released eight of our eaglets that were raised, captive raised, and all eight of ours made it over two years, and half of theirs died the first year. So apparently my fosters are really good. But they stay with us until January, so they, they're more a little older. So they're more developed mentally. Yep. Can you speak to whether eagles use tools? Certain birds do, and eagles are clearly very bright, but do they pick up things and use them? They don't need to. They have their talons and that beak that's very capable. So they really don't need to, but yes, crows, ravens. I mean, we have those uh, educational birds at our facility, and they are absolutely amazing jays. Uh, really, uh, the Corbett family is really very capable and, and use tools, yeah. Crows are some of the most intelligent birds. I think we got maybe one more question back here. Yes. Okay. You, know, you call you call the DNR. If it's a dead bird, call the DNR. You're not allowed to keep it, the, the carcass, of course. I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, well, remember the DNR has also had, had budget cutbacks. And that's a problem um, because they, even though, you know, it's not the, it's not the, it's not the employees, it's, it's the system. And uh, you know, they, they can't test either. So there's a lot of things in the lab that, you know, um, that no longer function, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, um, probably he may have had lead poisoning. You're not gonna see anything on the outside. It's just the organs shut down, uh, heart, liver, kidneys, bam. And uh, you're not gonna see it. Uh, you're not going to see an external thing. Was it an adult? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Big is a female. female. Females are larger than males by about a third. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so it could have been, it could have been a toxin, uh, in which case a coyote wouldn't have eaten it. So you got to look at that, too. Nor should we. Anyway. No. No, we are also not allowed to give them to, to, a, a, to anyone. So we have to send our birds into the feather repository in Colorado. So even I can't keep a feather. And I also can't give a feather to anybody. It's all, it has to go through federal. So U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, is, is someone to call. Um, but I think that most of the time the DNR would take the carcass from you, at least. They may not test it. Um, and. Yeah, you won't hear anything back. Uh, and that's, that's not their fault. That's the, unfortunately, the uh, yeah, budget has been really cut. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's just about all the, all the time we have. So thank you so much, Mark Gibson of, of Reggie. And remember, you guys are important. You can help bald eagles, you can help wildlife of all kinds by thinking about what you do, thinking about like your like discarding fishing line, uh, don't use lead ammunition, use copper, uh, better for you, better for them. 
And so, but who's gonna make the difference in this world? It's not gonna be an agency. It's not gonna be me. It's gonna be you and your children. <coughs> They're important, really important. Some of the most important work I do is educating kids. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, Lawrence. We appreciate having you. Uh, I just want to. Now, we probably might want to run a couple laps. <laughs> yeah, Bob, down. Put a $20 bill on your seat to save your seat. <laughs> I got a new sweatshirt. What do you think? Who said who? Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. I wasn't sure. Thank you very much. Sock Prairie Eagles, yeah. I was at the schools uh, in January in, uh, at Bridges Elementary and Grand Avenue, and I, I tried to get a free one, but I had to order online. Do I know what, does anybody know when the dam was built? The We Energy's uh, dam. I'm sure, I'm sure Jeff would know. It wasn't uh, I last know. year. <laughs> it was like 19, wasn't last year. 14, Jeff Martin, I thought. who is, is the guy that's out there at the Overlook right now. Randy, he's gone. You gotta ask Randy. Yeah, Randy, do you know how, the, when, when was, was the, the dam, dam built? built? 1914, the dam was built. Wow, yeah, cool. so it's been up there a long time. This lady's asking a question that I can't answer. What's happening with all these turtle shells? Are you going to stay around for the show or are you leaving? Okay, good. Yeah, these are, uh, I have these turtle shells here because I can't tell you. I can't tell you. In a few minutes, we're going to get a chance to try them on. And they are not from the Wisconsin River, they're from the Mississippi River. And that's all I'm going to say. Are there birds under what cages? That t-shirt right there, man? No. There's something in there, but there's not a bird. This lady's a scientist, did you know that? She's looking around and seeing everything. Is, there's a lot of, it, when once we get started, you're welcome to sit around the, the white snow. It's kind of cold over here. The white blankets, you can sit around the blankets on the floor right next to a turtle shell once we start. And I'm looking at my watch right now and it says six minutes to showtime. Six minutes to showtime. Now because it's warm, I gotta take off this one. So six minutes to showtime and um, yeah, the young, younger folks, our uh, audience members want to come forward. There's gonna be room for, uh, for the kids to be up close. sides of the white snow. I brought my snow blanket here today. And I, where's that lady that's asking me questions? She left because she didn't. So, all right. Let's see. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> hey, whenever you do work, make loud guttural noises. Do you know why? Have you heard this story? There was a three-year-old. There was a three-year-old who was picking up her toys. And, and, and every time she picked up her toys, she went, oh. And her mom says, why do you do it like that? And she says, that's the way grandpa does it. 
Yeah, some of you are grandpas. Anybody here a grandpa? You are not a grandpa. Maybe you are, I don't know. You're a grandma and you do the same thing. <laughs> you can touch the turtle shells if you want. They're as clean as a dollar bill. Oh, oh no. What happened to the woodchuck? Oh, here, wait, mouth to mouth. We don't do that anymore. Just chest compressions. You don't do mouth to mouth anymore. You just do chest. <laughs> yeah. This is my friend, the woodchuck or the groundhog. We're going to talk about that briefly too. What time is it now? Oh, three minutes to show time. Yes, do you want to say something? What? Wait. Oh, yeah. That's not me. That's a younger me. In other words, a few years ago. Oh, oh, excellent. Oh, you're gonna set the timer. I love that. You can go around the corner all the way to the fish can. Don't look at that. That don't. I didn't say that. All the way to this container. We're gonna make it half circle. And if we get, so we have everybody in the front row that wants to get here. If you want to get close. Wait, where's the kids? You guys were sitting way in the back. I remember that. Way up there, top. That's a fun thing to be. I love that. I love that. I apologize for the glare. There's a little bit of glare. We got some room I, over here. We, uh, there's some. Uh, I did you can put sit some, right in front of the turtle shells uh, high here. quality cream on my head. Yeah. Excellent choice. Yeah. Yes, yeah, There's sir. some big turtle shells right here. You can sit right in front. Did of them. you hear that science question? Everybody say science. Go like science. this. This means science and sign language. Question. Everybody say science question. What kind of turtle shell? What do you think that is? What's the largest turtle that lives in Wisconsin? Snapping turtle. Snapping turtle. Very good. The snapping turtle is the largest kind of turtle that lives native to Wisconsin. These are snapping turtle shells. Yes, you can try them on if you want. This guy over here, excellent. But turn it around. You don't want the spikes sticking. You don't want your head sticking out your rear end. Make sure the spikes go backwards. We, we didn't start yet. Don't have to pay for that. Right. If you want to touch them, you can. Or you can play them like a drum. Some people use them to play like a drum. And my friend Arch. Art is a Native American. They use this to, to uh, burn some sage and stuff because turtles were very important. And I want you to wonder why in the world would I have a bunch of turtle shells when we're talking about eagles? Can't tell you because we haven't started yet. One minute to show time. One minute to show time. Does everybody know where the bathrooms are? Because you're going to need to wash your hands after this. When you're done, you're going to have to, oh yeah. I did bring along some hand sanitizer. I'll put it over here. But the best thing is soap and water. There's soap and water in the bathroom, unless, well, at least in the men's room. And the all gender ones are over there. So after this, before you have lunch, and uh, you're probably going to get hungry after this because there's a lot of food. I have brought some food with me. Not, it's, not, it's not your food, but my food. What do we have here? One minute. One minute to show time. Jenny, are you going to say something, or am I just going to keep rocking? I guess so. I can I can do an introduction. I don't know if you need any introduction. Uh, Did my, you plan my, a 20-minute introduction? My, yeah, so it's 20 minutes. I'll just talk for 20 minutes. Um, but nope, it is 11.30, so I think we're going it's to go ahead and, and get started. Um, but if you, uh, if any, anyone who wants to come down close certainly can. And so, again, my name is Jenny. I'm with we the Fairy Bluff Eagle Council. On, and uh, we're so glad that y'all came to our bald eagle watching days. And I want to introduce Mr. David Stokes. He's the animal dude, and uh, he's a wonderful presenter who has a long, long history with uh, bald eagle days. So we are very excited to have him here. So I Thank will turn you, it Jane. over to David. All right. Hi, everybody. Raise your hand if you can hear this. Please raise your hand if you can hear this. Everybody say, I have two ears. I have, two ears. I have one mouth. I, have one mouth. I, will I will listen twice as much. To my mom and dad. To my, mom and dad. To my grandma and grandpa. To my, grandma and grandpa. To my best friend. To my best friend. Forever, and ever. Forever and ever. Everybody say, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but, it but it should. Everybody say, good. good. Uh, morning. 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 Friends. Why is this morning? Because it's like the summer 
Oh, like the sun's coming up. Everybody say good. good. Morning. Morning. Afternoon. Afternoon. Nighttime. Nighttime. Ah! Very nice. Everybody say good. good. Morning. Morning. Friends. My name is David. Everybody say hi, David. Hi. And sometimes they call me bald eagle. Everybody make a bald eagle. If you don't have a hat like this, you got to make an eagle like this. This is the sign language for bald eagle. Why do they call me a bald eagle? Because I'm bald. Wait a minute. Are bald eagles really bald? No. What color is a bald eagle's head? Everybody say white. Pick some lint off. You say white. How old does an eagle have to be to have a white head? At least five. Now, I have some friends. Everybody say friends. friends. Point to Minnesota. You can go that way. It's a lot, lot farther. In Minnesota, they used to say anywhere from three to seven years of age is when eagles get their white heads. Everybody say five is right in the middle. Now, who met Marge? Who met my friend Marge a few minutes ago? Because she's done so much research on eagles. Everybody say eagles. There are so many eagles in Wisconsin now, they're getting their white heads later in life. Like seven. Who's seven years old? Anybody seven? Who's six? Who's eight? Who's five? Who's nine? Who's four? Who's 10? Who's three? Who's 11? Who's two? Anybody younger than that? Who's 71? Who wants to get older? What happens if you don't get older? Everybody say, dead. It's better to get older, yeah. Bob Dylan says, if you're not busy being born, you're busy dying. Everybody say, what? So I brought along my eagle friends. We're going to talk about animals who live in the habitats of eagles and also laugh with, everybody say laughter. Make two L's. Make your hands look like mine. Point to your belly button. Lift up. Say live. Now say laughter. <laughs> We're supposed to laugh at the animals. Everybody make the sign for animal. This means animal in sign language. When I do this, some of my friends go like this. What's that supposed to be? The chicken dance. Make a bird. Make a bird. Question, did you ever eat a bird? Yeah, no. No. Who eats chicken? Oh, chicken's a bird. Who eats turkey? Question, did you ever eat a dead bird? Yes. Isn't the chicken dead when you eat it? Yes. Some restaurants were not sure. <laughs> mommy, mommy, the hot dog is still alive. <laughs> and your mom's going to say, that's what the fork is for. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a, that's, a, that's a scout joke, forget about that. So I brought along some, uh, rule number one, I'm gonna ask you not to touch my instant snow. Now I call this blanket, these blankets, it, everybody say they're sheets, not blankets. Sheets. Yeah, I know, I call them blanket because sheet is too close to the other word, never mind, forget about that. So I brought this, I brought these sheets here and I call them instant snow. Why would I call it instant snow? Because they're white. Everybody say they're white. Because they look like snow, everybody say white. Is snow always white? Repeat after me. Repeat after me. Say what I say. Repetition is the mother of all learning. Please, may I have another cookie? Just so I can remember it. Don't eat the yellow snow. But you should smell it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, what's the yellow stuff? Who's got a dog? Who's got a dog? When you take your dog out for a walk, what do they do most of the time? Pee. pee. Why does your dog pee so much? They drink water. Everybody make a W. Make a W, say water. Why does your dog, everybody make a tree? Why does your dog smell the bottom of a tree and pee where another dog peed? At what point in your life did you realize you were a genius? Everybody say, mark your territory. Yeah, the dog. Now, everybody look at the blanket. You see it's white, but there's also a point to the yellow snow. Everybody say, that's not real. That's, not real. that's actually paint, because when I washed the blanket, the, the actual, never mind. It's yellow. It's, it's, it's paint. I paint I, if you see a little bit of yellow snow, don't touch it. Yes. But if it smells like a skunk, it was put there by a fox. Yeah. Wait a minute. Everybody make a K. Say skunk. If you see a little bit of yellow snow, don't touch it. But if it smells like a skunk, it was put there by a fox. Fox's pee smells like a skunk. 
We think, everybody say think. think. Everybody say, that's not real. Excuse me, stop fooling around. We think, everybody say think. think. Dream. Dream. Believe. 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 Learn. Learn. Think. think. We think that foxes pee on a tree and it tells other foxes stay away. Now, is this a mom or a dad? It's a mom. <laughs> Baby fox! Okay. Baby fox. Do foxes live where eagles live? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Foxes live all around the state of Wisconsin. What's a fox's... Now, by the way, this is a... Excuse me. Excuse me. This is a, what, a red fox. You know why? It has a white tip on its tail. Red foxes have a white tip on their tail. Gray foxes have a dark tip. Now, what's a fox's favorite food? Mice. Everybody say mice. Yeah, they eat meat, that's right. How do I know, how do I know that red foxes eat mice? Because it's a cat? Okay. I've seen a red fox eat a mouse. Here's another reason. Everybody go like this. Go like this. Everybody say poop. This is a sign language for poop. Parents, you're going to be glad to know this. Everybody try this. Go like this. Everybody say poop. Now make sure the poop goes down. Poop does not go up. Unless you're on the moon. Why? Gravity. Now, guess what? I looked at a fox's poop. Everybody say, why? Why? It's science. Everybody say, science. science. I looked at a fox's... Now, sometimes you see the foxes, but more often you see their tracks, or you see their pee, or you see their scat. Everybody say, scat. scat. The science name for poop is scat. Yeah. It starts with an S, ends with a T. It comes out of you, and it comes out of me. I know what you're thinking. It could be called that, but be scientific and call it scat. That's what it's called. I will tell you this. I looked at Fox's scat, and guess what I found? Mouse hair. Everybody make a mouse. This is a mouse in sign language. Now make your hand look like mine. Everybody say rat. Now say boring. <laughs> yeah, never do this when your teacher's talking. Or you're dead. Forget about that. I saw a fox's scat and it had mouse hair. Guess what it didn't have? Wow. Rabbit hair. Everybody make a television. On television, foxes eat rabbits. In nature, they mostly eat mice. Now, also, I mentioned the smell of the skunk. Here's my friend the skunk. Everybody say, that's not real. Yeah. How do you know it's a skunk? The white, white stripe. Repeat after me. Say what I say. say, what I say. Black, and white. Black and white. Warning coloration. Warning it's the opposite of camouflage. You see that kid over there? It looks like a head sitting there. There's no, I can't even, oh, because he's got a camouflage shirt. Never mind. Forget about that. All right, mom or dad. Is this a mom or a dad? It's a mom. Wait a minute. Twins. Wait a minute. Triplets. I only have three. You know why? $8.95 a piece. Okay. <laughs> so guess what? This time of year, who has seen skunks out already this time of year? Skunks are winter sleepers. Everybody say winter sleep. Winter sleep. When I say winter sleep, go like this. Make a big snore. Winter sleep. Who snores more, your mom or your dad? Hey, even if your mom just goes one snore, that counts. I don't snore anymore. You know why? CPAP machine. Yeah, forget about that. So guess what? Skunks are winter sleepers. So are uh, raccoons and, and opossums. Now, hibernation is different than sleep. Everybody say, hibernate. hibernate! Thank you for not making any noise. A hibernating woodchuck. Everybody say, everybody say, that's not real. <laughs> this is my toy woodchuck. A hibernating woodchuck, when it hibernates, takes one breath every six minutes. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Hibernating woodchucks, the male will wake up two weeks before the female or so and mate with the female while she's still hibernating. Here's a baby. But I'm, these toys you can touch a little bit later if you want. All right. So I'm going to talk about some more animals here. I brought along a number of animals for you to see and, and it's, as we celebrate laughing with the animals. Oh, yeah, here's the eagle. Everybody say, that's not real. That's not real. We're only going to see a couple more toys and then I'm going to bring out the live things. All right. Now, I think this is a girl. Why? She's bigger. She's bigger. Here's the boy. 
Everybody say, he's shiny. He's shiny. Okay, this is not a baby. How do you know it's not a baby? White head. And they get their white heads like maybe seven or eight years of age now. If you see, everybody say, see. An eagle flying around Sauk Prairie and it has a white head, it's probably seven or eight years old. Now, what's an eagle's favorite food? Everybody say, everybody say, what the heck's going on inside you? Everybody say, fish! Everybody say, that's not real. I know it's not real because it doesn't stink. How many, how many of you think fish stink? My dad didn't like fish. Yeah, bald eagles, favorite food probably is fish. But they are opportunists. Oh, wait a minute. This is a mom. There's an egg. It's going to hatch. Everybody say, it looks like a chicken. Get back in there. I don't want to go in there. Just stay in there for a minute. Get inside there. I don't want to go. I don't want to go in there either. All right. Now, somebody told me, if you want to understand the, you have to interview the, the fish. Everybody make a fish. If you want to understand the eagle, I have to interview fish. So I brought fish with me today. Whoa, put the perch upon. Wait a minute, this is not a perch. What kind of fish is it supposed to be? It's a walleye. Very good. Everybody say, it's a toy. Whoa, put the fish upon the tray. Whoa, feed your friends a fish fillet. Whoa, satisfied till Saturday fry. Fish fry. Who eats fish? Anybody here eat fish? Thank you, Ken Longquist, for writing that great song. What's the big fish like to eat? Smaller fish. What do smaller fish like to eat? Smaller fish. What do really small fish like to eat? Smaller. What do really, really small fish like to eat? Really small fish. What do really small fish like to eat? Yeah, everybody say plankton. Everybody say SpongeBob. This is Sheldon the plankton from SpongeBob. Excuse me, I gotta talk to plankton. Look at me. Do not look at me like that. Did you know? Everybody say no. Everybody say no. This means no, you can't have a cookie. Everybody say no. This means I know something about nature. Did you know outside in the in the water outside there are small creatures called plankton? Everybody say plankton. Planktos. Made to wander. Stop repeating. So the Greek word plankton, like the Greek word planktos, it, you th who thinks they know the most important plankton in freshwater in Wisconsin? Probably the most important plankton in freshwater in Wisconsin is mosquitoes! mosquitoes. Now don't worry, this is a Minnesota mosquito. Where's the people from Minnesota? All right. And when I go to Minnesota, this will be a Wisconsin mosquito. But guess what? Fish don't eat the adult mosquito. They eat the baby. Everybody say larva. So if you like fish, you have to appreciate mosquitoes. I went like this for a sign for a mosquito, and a four-year-old girl who was deaf said this. The sign for a mosquito. Baby mosquitoes invented snorkels. Wait a minute, I got a snorkel in here. Wait a minute, no. Wait a minute, no. Do you see what I see? Why is there a snorkel inside my fish bag? Why is there a fish? Why did I put a snorkel inside the fish bag? So you can breathe underwater. There's an animal I've already mentioned that has a snorkel attached to its abdomen. Remember the song goes like this: head. Let's try it together. Ready? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Six legs, two antenna, and usually some wings. What about the compound eyes? Compound eyes. Is it that how it goes? Yeah, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. We got to try it now. When my daughter was in first grade. She's uh, 30, 31 years old now. When she was in first grade, she hated the song. Let's try it. Everybody feel your head. Everybody say warm blood. Is your head warm? Yeah, if your head, yeah, everybody say warm blood. Everybody say, I love blood. Put your hand on your heart and do the blood like this. Everybody say, I love blood. I don't want to see blood. <laughs> don't listen to this guy. L warm blood. Feel your neck. Is your neck warm? Everybody say warm blood. Feel your armpit. Is it warm? Everybody say warm blood. What keeps us alive in the winter is warm blood. Pretty amazing thing. Birds and mammals. Everybody make a bird? Like eagles have warm blood. Everybody make a mammal. Everybody say feel your, feel your hair. Everybody feel your hair. You don't have a beard. What are you doing? 
If I did this, you'd be going like bald eagle. Birds and mammals have warm blood. Everybody say shoulders. Everybody say thorax. thorax. Now grab your equator. Everybody say abdomen. abdomen. Nice and slow together. Ready? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Six legs, two antenna, and usually some wings. What about the compound eyes? Compound eyes. Okay, sit down. What animal did we just describe? An ant. An ant. Everybody say ant. Ants. In your pants. Ants in your pants. Everybody make an insect. Thumb on your nose. Two antenna. Ready? Thumb on your nose. Two antenna. This is insect in sign language. Here's a picture of me when I was a kid with a snorkel and the mosquito larva. Everybody say nature did it first. Nature did it first. Who invented snorkels? Mosquito larva. Everybody say larva. larva. A baby mosquito is called a larva. Yeah. And here's a picture of them. Yeah. I love, I love mosquitoes. I don't want to be bit by a mosquito. I don't want Lyme. I don't want, I did have Lyme at one point. I, I want, I like to appreciate them because they are food for other animals. All right, now, you said fish. I brought along fish here today for you to get a chance to see. Oh, one more friend. You're gonna get a chance later today at two o'clock. Schlitz Audubon Nature Center with their raptor program is gonna be here. And I, I like to, I wanna point out something. They, they brought raptors, birds of prey, but you know what? When I, when I saw a program once about birds of prey, I said, do you have any uh, great blue herons? And they, this one person said, no. I said, why not? I said, well, not a, oh. You know what a great blue heron likes to eat? Fish. And everybody say frogs. frogs. Do you know what an osprey likes to eat? Fish and frogs. You know what a chickadee likes to eat? Insects. Chickadees are birds of prey. But the real better word is raptor. Everybody say raptor. raptor. And I know that there's no, no word too big for a kid. Now everybody say, this is not, not a real owl. Who, what kind of owl is it supposed to be? A great horned owl. Its first name is great, its middle name is horn, its last name is owl. Now everybody say, these are not ears. These are feathers. Watch me trace the owl's ears. Watch me trace the owl's ears. Owl's ears face forward, right behind their eyes. Wherever they look, they're listening in the same direction. Now everybody make the sign language for owl. It's like having toilet paper tube stuck to your eyeballs. Now, everybody try this. Hang on to your beard. I mean your chin. Don't move your head. Look at the ceiling. Now look at the floor. Look to the left, look to the right. Everybody look at my eyeballs. Pretty cool, huh? You and I can wiggle our eyes, owls cannot. Wherever the owl looks, they are listening in the same direction. If the owl wants to look over there, its ears listen in the same direction. Now, what's an owl's favorite food? Everybody say, mice! mice. Everybody say, that's not, that's not real. I know it's not real. Get back in there. I don't want to get in there! Just, just stay in there for a minute. A friend of mine said, if you want to understand the owl, interview the mouse. Let's see if we have a mouse here today. Let's see if we have a mouse here today. All right. <laughs> Wait, there's Cheerios in here. And an apple. Cheerios and an apple. What? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Everybody say, hello, mouse. Where's the mouse? No way, baby. There's no mouse on my head. Why would anybody put a mouse on their head? I don't have to say, may I have your attention, please? This my, oh, wait a minute. Did you just pee up there? That doesn't bother me. You know why? Mouse pee is good for hair growth. Everybody say it's not working. This is not a wild mouse. Wild mice, everybody make a B. Make your hand look like mine. Everybody say brown. A wild mouse is brown or gray. Everybody say gray. And, oh, it just pooped on me. Sorry about that. All right. The mouse, I'm going to put you back in here for just a few minutes. If it gets loose, help me catch it, all right? I brought a friend of mine. I brought a friend of mine along. Everybody say, hello, Annette. Hello. This is my friend, Annette. I brought this along, Justin Bieber. I mean, just, just in case. If it gets loose, help me catch it, all right? This, this is not for putting on people's head. But if it gets, we don't want to, I don't think it'll get loose. I'll put the lid on for a minute, all right? Wild mice are not white. All right, and mice are very important because they're food for other animals. Wait, 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 I gotta show you something here. I brought along, now, unfortunately or fortunately, we do not have any snow. 
I brought some snow in this tube, and what happened to it? Snow. Everybody say, Care says I'm melting! <laughs> I auditioned for that part, but they said the beard had to go. Forget about that. All right, so I melted this. I melted this. So what's snow made out of? Water. water. Make a W say water. water. What else is in snow? Ice. ice. Everybody say, freeze! freeze. Well, what is ice? ice? So what's in snow besides water? Ice. What's on top of this here? What's up here? Everybody say air. air. Because there's air and snow, animals can live under it. Because there's air and snow, animals can live under the snow. Everybody say mice. mice. Wild mice are so comfortable in the snow, make some snow. Make some snow. Now make rain. Now make snow. Everybody make a snowball. Throw it at me. Go. This is why I don't do this outside. <laughs> and we don't have any snow outside anymore. Unfortunately, it's still winter. Even though we don't have snow, it's still winter because the spring equinox hasn't happened yet. So guess what? Animals are so comfortable. Mice are so comfortable with snow, they have babies under the snow. Snow is mostly air. Make some snow. When snow comes down, it covers the earth. It's like a blanket for animals who might live under the earth. So I brought mice along and fish along. What else did I bring with me today who might live with eagles? Turtles. Make a turtle. Put the shell on. Take the shell off. Ouch! <laughs> you can't take the shell off. Make a turtle. Put the shell on. Take the shell off. Ouch! Everybody say, stop it. Make a turtle. Put the shell on. Only on television does the turtle jump out of his shell, take a bath, and get back in. The turtle shell is the turtle's back. Everybody say, prove it. Prove it. All right, if you have a picture in front of you, a picture of an eagle nest, pick it up. Pick it up. Hold it up high. Be the teacher. Show the people that don't want to come down any closer. What do you see in that nest? What do you see? That's a picture taken by Ron, Ron Eckstein from the DNR. Yeah. What do you see in there? Bones. There's bones in there. There's a baby eagle. How do I know that's not an adult eagle? Doesn't that white? Yeah. Turn it around. What else do you see in the nest besides bones? There, eggs? Squirrels and fish. What else do you see? Somebody's got to notice it. Turtle shells. Look at, the, look at the picture. There's turtle shells in the nest. Wait a minute. Do turtles climb trees? Everybody say, in your dreams. Yeah, you can dream. A turtle climbed a tree in a dream. I love that. Eagles will eat turtles and bring them to the nest. Guess what else was found in a nest? Everybody say, deer legs. Do deer climb trees? Everybody say, in your dreams. I saw a deer climb a tree in my dreams. Wait a minute. Reindeer. Santa. I don't know. Guess what? You heard this from Marge earlier. Eagles will eat whatever they can find. Now, some people say it's gross when eagles eat dead things. How many of you eat dead fish? Fry on Friday night. Everybody say, fish are dead. When you have fish fry. Cheeseburgers are dead. Yeah. What are cheeseburgers? Everybody say, mm. cow. Never mind. Forget about that. Some parents didn't want their kids to know that. I'm pretty apologetic. All right. So I brought turtles along here today. What else? Turtles and mice and fish. What else did I bring? Who, who said snakes? Who said snake? Everybody make a snake. Everybody say, all snakes have teeth. All snakes, have teeth. All snakes can bite. All snakes can bite. That's how they eat. All people can bite. All people. That's, how That's how we eat. Except for my grandpa. Why? He didn't have any teeth. My grandpa told me a story about he and his wife, my grandmother. They had one set of false teeth. So when they sat down to dinner, they had to wait. Don't worry. Most kids don't get that joke. All right. So all snakes. When I bring out the snake, by the way, please do not scream. Do you know why? Because it bothers me. Snakes do not have ears. They have no external ears. For all practical purposes, they really can't hear you. So when I bring out the snake, do not scream. Do you think an owl, guess what? I saw a picture of an owl eating a snake. If you see a picture of an owl eating a snake, then owls eat snakes. Would an eagle eat a snake? Maybe. Maybe. Eagles are predators. What else did I bring besides eagles and fish and mice and turtles? Frogs, make a fist under your chin. Push out two fingers. Who was here earlier when the gray tree frog was singing? 
A few minutes ago, the great tree frog was actually singing, and it made a noise like, like, count, everybody count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, time, nine, nine. I heard this a few minutes ago. Raise your hand if you can hear this. Oh, don't listen to that. The sound of the gray tree frog. It was singing right over here. And that's the boy. Only the boy tree frog sings. And when he sings, he blows up his throat. And a couple weeks ago, he started singing. Why did the tree frogs all of a sudden start to sing? I think spring was coming. Who said that? Me. Yes, spring was coming. Point to the sun. Make a circle. Shine on yourself. Shine on the grown-ups. Shine on everybody in the world. Yeah. The day length is happening, it's changing. I gotta show you this. Everybody say, the whole wide world. world. Round and round these seasons are turning. Spring to summer, autumn to winter, and from winter round to spring. The earth is turning right now. I'm gonna tell you a true story. Who's got a birthday in December? Who's got a birthday in December? Anybody got a birthday? <laughs> Who's got a birthday coming up? Come on, folks, don't you think you're gonna live to your next birthday? <laughs> Mine's coming up. It's today, but... Oh, never mind. Forget about that. So, I'm going to tell you a true story. Everybody say true. true. I will not lie to you today. Everybody say true. true. The earth right here in Sauk Prairie is closer to the sun now than it is in the summer. Everybody say what? what? Give me that puzzled look like this. The earth where we live, the earth, the whole wide world, we're closer to the sun in the winter than we are in the summer. Why is it colder? I love this. Everybody say tilt. Yes. Try it again. Tilt. Yes. Parents, be careful if you're over 40. <laughs> spinning on a tilt. Change the seasons. We're spinning on a tilt. Change the seasons because one trip around the sun is what we call the year. The time you've been around that place is the time since you've been here. Do you feel like you're in outer space? Well, you are. Spinning on a little planet orbiting a star, just an average star. Guess what? The Earth, the Earth turns on a tilt. Who can tell me how many times you've been around the sun? How many times you've been? How many times? Uh, nine times? Nine times. Are you nine years old? I've been around the sun 71 times. How old am I? Every time you go around the sun, it's one year. And guess what? Everybody say tilt. In the wintertime, we are closer to the sun, but we're tilted away from it. And what's happening now is the day length is getting, getting longer. And I think that's why my tree frogs were singing. I also heard this. I also heard this in my bathroom, by the way. I keep my frogs in the bathroom. You know why? Water. There's water. There's water, easy water. The small bathroom, not the big bathroom, the small one. And I heard this the other day. Everybody try it, ready? Everybody say, not rivet, not rivet, not rivet. There is no frog in Wisconsin that says rivet. Here's the sound of the bullfrog. Listen to this. A bullfrog. Would an eagle eat a frog? Yeah. Maybe. Do they live in the habitats of eagles? Yeah. I brought out, let's see. Oh, the, anything else on the table? I got to show you that. Okay. I'm going to bring out the animals. Everybody say, bring out the turtles. Bring out the turtles. Okay. We're going to see all the stuff first, and then we're going to pass stuff around. If you have a turtle shell in front of you, please pick it up. Look inside. Everybody say, backbone. backbone. Try it on. Try it on. Put it on your back. Parents, take pictures if you want. Put your hands down in front and become a turtle if you want. Now make sure the spikes are going backwards because you don't want your head sticking out to your rear end. <laughs> These are snapping turtle shells. Everybody say, why do you have so many? Because I believe in hands-on learning. Yeah, these turtle shells, most of them came from snapping turtles from the Mississippi River. I brought a lot of a bunch of them because there's a fish store. Everybody point to Prairie du Chien. You can go that way, it's a lot farther. In Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, there's a fish store called the Valley Fish Market. And guess what they sell? Fish and turtle. Fish and turtle meat. You know what a turtle tastes like? Everybody say, like a turtle. Who said chicken? Everybody say, like a turtle. Like a turtle. What's a mouse taste like? Like a mouse. Like a mouse. What's a hot dog taste like? Hot dog. <laughs> That's weird. Because as far as we know, it's not a cat. like a cat? OK, we can budget. Oh, cat, OK. Yeah, these, these turtle shells came from there because I can't let you touch the live snapping turtle. You know why? Everybody go like this. Go like this. Everybody say poop. 
The reason we don't touch the live snapping turtle is because of germs. Where are the germs? Everybody say, in the poop, of course. And kids that are in the seat still, if you want to touch a turtle shell, come on closer. All right. Everybody say, it's a baby. I have a baby snapping turtle. Actually, in September, it will be one years old. And this turtle is in here. It had a bath earlier today. But when I ask you to touch it and pass it around, do not shake the turtle. Do not pound on it. And do not drink this water. <laughs> but make sure you look at its belly. Everybody feel your belly. If a snapping turtle has a flat belly, it's a girl. If it has a dent, it's a boy. But it has to be six years. Everybody makes six. This is six in sign language. It has to be about six years old before you can tell if it's a boy or a girl. Can you hold up that turtle shell right next to you there? That one has, let's practice language. Everyone say carapace. carapace. The back of the turtle is called the carapace. Everybody say carapace. carapace. Feel your belly. The bottom of the turtle is called the plastron. Everybody say plastron. plastron. If the, is that plastron dented or flat? Can you feel it? What does that mean? It's a boy. Yeah, it was a boy. Very good. Now, the, most of these are just a carapace. Now, that one is the kind of turtle shell you find in a turtle in its eagle nest. That was from a painted turtle. Everybody say, where's the paint? Yes, I bleached it so you could see. Everybody say, bring out a live turtle. Bring out a live turtle. Okay, when a turtle comes out, this, I want to bring out a six-year-old. How do I know it's a six-year-old? Because it was five last year. <laughs> because it happened, I've happened to have it for five years. The only way to know their age is to have them that long. You can count the rings up to about five years old. Everybody say, hello, snapping turtle. Hello, snapping turtle. Can I touch it now? No, we can't touch this turtle. Remember why? Because of the germs. Because of the germs. This one, <laughs> okay. Guess what? You don't care about the germs. Yes, but your lawyer does. Okay. <laughs> This turtle did something on the way here. I'm going to pick it up. Everybody say, why do you get to touch it? Because I'm not going to sue myself. That's why. Everybody say, drip dry. Drip dry, drip dry. Looks like something, but it's not. OK, put the toy over there like this. This is a common snapping turtle. It happens to be six years old. It has a super long tail like a dinosaur. It has long toenails like your mom. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's see if they can do the magic trick. Something they do naturally in, in nature. Look at this. Oh, everybody say, do it again, baby. <laughs> Don't forget the baby. Here we go. Do it again, baby. What does the turtle use to flip over? Yeah. It's head. Everybody say, use your head. <laughs> your teacher will tell you that. Your parent is the child's first teacher. Your teacher will tell you that every day. Use your head. And it has a super long neck, a long tail. This is the type of snapping turtle that could be 80 or 90 years old in Wisconsin and live 80 or 90 years. This one happens to be six. I know six because I've had it that long. And I've got to give it a bath later. Plus, we're going to feed it some fish. But I won't be able to see them. I should have worked it out. Everybody say, bring out a nine-year-old. How do I know it's nine? I've had it for nine years. Raise your hand if you see orange. Raise your hand if you see orange. This is a painted turtle. This painted turtle happens to be a boy. I know it's a boy because it has long toenails in the front. Wait a minute. Box turtles and snapping turtles, you look at their plastron, their belly. But for a painted turtle or a mud turtle that's in the water, the other than a snapping turtle, you have to look at their toenails. Why would the girl painted turtle want long toenails in the back? What does she do he doesn't do? Lay eggs, dig a hole. Why does the boy have long toenails in the front? Everybody say to hang on to the girl. If you don't know what this means, talk to your parents on the way home. Okay, I'm in trouble now. Now, did I touch the turtle? So what do I have to do? Everybody say baby wipes. A lot of you don't like baby wipes. When you were a baby, you liked it when your mom wiped your bleep. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I'm going to clean it up a little bit later. I want to bring out... Another turtle. I'm going to show you all the stuff first, and then we're going to have organized chaos where you can come down here and touch it and hold it and pick it up and all that kind of stuff. All right. Whoops. Everybody say Tortuga. Tortuga. Everybody say Chitty Paha. Chitty Paha. Everybody say Juve. Wugwe. Guai Guai. Those are words for turtle in other languages. How do you say turtle in English? Turtle. Turtle. Very good. Now, here's a science question. Science. Question. Why do I put my... Animals in coolers. So they can be quiet. I like what else? 
Maybe they can stay cold. Do I want them to be cold? No. On a hot summer day, I want them to be cold. How do you make it cooler or cold? Ice. Ice. Right, so everybody say freeze. Freeze. How do you make it cooler or warm? Warm water, hot water bottles. That's what I use to keep them warm when I travel. And I, everybody say, everybody say, cheeseburger. cheeseburger. This is my friend, the three-toed box turtle. Don't look, she's taking a bath. So Don't look. Stop looking. Stop it. Please notice, first of all, move off the blanket. You have to move off, oh, that's all the way, all the way off the white blanket, all the way off the white blanket. Thank you very much. You're going to get a chance to touch it in a couple of minutes, I promise. Notice it doesn't have a very big tail. That's because it doesn't live in the water. Most turtles that live in the water have long tails. Everybody say, what about a soft-shelled turtle? Okay, there's exceptions to all the rules. Soft-shelled turtles in Wisconsin, there's two kinds. They have a tiny little tail, but they spend almost all their time in the water. Everybody say, whatever. And this one has a flat belly. It's a girl, and she's wearing a turtleneck. Tell her to stay on the blanket. Who invented turtlenecks? Everybody say, turtles did. This is a chitty paha. Everybody say, chitty paha. Don't look, she's taking a bath. Don't look. Stop looking. This is a Russian tortoise. This one doesn't even drink. It gets all of us from the, the food that it eats, and its favorite food is green leaf lettuce from Aldi. <laughs> yeah, I have some in the car. Tell these turtles, could you pull the blanket back so it's overlapping there? Pull this instant snow, kind of, just kind of make it like you made your bed this morning. The, uh, just kidding. Now tell the turtles, stay on the blanket. If they go off the blanket, they get a timeout. All right, I'm gonna bring out, I'm gonna bring out the, uh, I'm gonna bring out the uh, mice. I showed you the mice. Let's bring out. Let's bring out the frogs. All right. Now, if the frog comes out, if it jumps in your lap, don't squish it. If it jumps in your mouth, don't swallow. Everybody go like this. Everybody say that's not gonna happen. Because my mom's a lawyer. That's an old joke. Okay, very good. But all right, here we go. We'll start with the tree frogs. Tree frogs. At this time of year, what are frogs doing? Hibernating. And some, some frogs have been known to freeze solid in the winter and be alive in the spring. Wood frogs, leopard frogs, sometimes great tree frogs. Everybody say, freeze! freeze. If you freeze solid in the winter, dearly beloved, we're gathered here today, forgive me. Everybody say, bring out the tree frog! All right, tree frogs, oh, okay. All right, all right, where's the, okay. What? Everybody say, he's tiny! He's tiny! But he's not a baby! This is an adult gray tree frog. That's as big as it gets. There's no frog on my head. Why would anybody put a frog in their head? So I don't have to say, may I have your attention, please? Get up there, baby. Oh, yeah, there we go. Slime. Did you see that? Jedi reflexes. And I didn't even blink. All right, what's going to happen is we might get a chance. Well, we'll see what happens. We might get a chance to hold the frog, but at least you'll get a chance to pass around the jar. The frog's gonna be in the jar. There's holes in the jar so that they can breathe. Oh, oh, did you see that? Yep, that's exactly what you think it is. It peed on me. When I pass it around, please do not shake it, do not pound on it, but you can look at it like this. And you can notice that it has toes that are sticky. Everybody say, tree frogs have sticky toes. Everybody say, true frog. True frogs have webbed feet. Everybody say, toads have warts. There are three, everybody say three. three. Count to three, one, two, three. This is three in sign. This is not three, what's this? A W. This is six, right. And this is a W, and this is wow. Everybody say wow. Yeah, so the amazing thing is this. Tree frogs in Wisconsin, some people say frog and toad. A teacher said to me, what's the difference between a frog and a toad? I said, I'm confused. Because when she says frog, does she mean true frog with webbed feet? There are six of those in Wisconsin. Or tree frog with sticky toes. There are five of those. An old guy said to me, toads are dry, frogs are wet. Everybody say, uh-uh. Where do frogs start out their life? In the water. All frogs start out their life in the water. Some of them stay in the water. Some of them move to the trees. And this frog, this turtle, in just a moment, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put this turtle right in here. Why? Because that's a timeout in there, okay? 
He's going to go in there because she can't, she can't get out of there. She can get out of that one. All right? And when I pass around the tree frogs in the container, please don't shake them. They're not pounding them. We might get a chance in a few minutes to hold the tree frog. We'll see how that works. Because I'm holding frogs and snakes. It might be hard to do either one. All right, here we go. You don't have to hold it if you don't want to. I'm going to bring out, I'm going to bring out the frog. When I got out of the car today, a frog landed on my head. Everybody say, uh-uh. Uh, uh. Everybody say, hello, bullfrog. Does anybody see the bullfrog? Wait a minute. What's that stuff that looks like jellyfish? That shed skin. They shed their skin. And there's a little poop in there, too. Sorry about that. When I bring out the frog, I'll give, I'll give him a bath, and I'll give you a chance to touch him. And you know what he feels like? A pickle. There's, there's only one way to prove that. All right. So let's set this up. I'm going to put this one right here, and I need you guys open that up without spilling and pour it in there, will you? Thanks. And then, ooh. Ah. Huh. Everybody say, huh. Huh. All right. And let's see if there's any fish left in here. You know why? There we go. There's some fish in here. And there's a few dead fish. Let me say this. The fish are fresh dead. So it's okay to touch them. <laughs> All right, in just a couple minutes, I'm going to say, get up, move around, and you can touch them. But not yet. <laughs> There's one over there, and it's going to, could you open that one up and pour it in there? Has that got any water? Now, please help me keep my toys out of the water. Keep the toys out of the water. And in a few minutes, you can touch these fish. Go ahead, pour it in. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Wait a minute, and this turtle, this turtle is gonna be in this dish, the Russian tortoise. Now I would suggest, if you're gonna to touch the turtle, first of all, don't pick it up, okay? One time a girl picked it up and guess what happened? It pooped on her. And after I took a video and we, we watched her. So if you really wanna hold it, your parents can help you. You would sit down on the floor and put it in your lap, but it could poop on you. So you're taking the chance. But if you just want to touch it, you can. I would say don't touch its face. The Russian tortoise came from Russia. And let's see. Okay, the mice are going to go in the jars. The mice are going to go in the jars. Let go. And then the snakes are coming out. And then we're going to figure out, I know I have at least one snake holder that will hold the snake and let the kids touch it. I know that. Because <laughs> Hello mouse. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get in there. There you go. Now, do they like to be in this jar? I think so. Actually, this one doesn't. <laughs> this one. I don't want to get in that jar. And they like to get inside and I'll lie. I mean, toilet paper, too. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, mouse. Where you at? Hey, yeah, mouse. Wah, wah, wah. All the way in, all the way in. Okay. So, we got mice to look at. Wait a minute now. Okay. One. Who's the loneliest? Hey. Hey. Does anybody see my uh, the covers from my... <laughs> When I only got one cover, that can't work. I'm going to put the lids on. If there's a cover on something, do not open it. If there's a cover on it, do not open it. If there's no cover, you can reach in and touch it. Here it is, right here. Three more containers. So I'm going to start by passing around the mice in the container. Don't shake it. Don't pound on it. There's holes in the top so they can breathe. But look at it like this. And notice, of course, they poop when they get in here. Why is that important? Everybody say scat. scat. Everybody say science. science. You can recognize what mouse poop looks like, so you know if your mom says, is this a mouse in the silverware drawer? And then you know, because you see the poop. OK. That's the truth. That happens. That happens. I need you to go in here, there, because your lid doesn't fit. All right. Are you ready to start passing? 
Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to pass this around. You can touch it, pass it on. Kids in the back, come closer. You're welcome to walk on the sheet. I'm going to bring out the frogs. I'm going to bring out the frog. Here you go. You can touch this one. You can touch this one. Pass it that way. Here comes the, here comes the turtle. Check out the baby turtle. Please do not shake them. Parents, help me, do, help me make sure they don't shake. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. The gray tree frog. Here comes a gray tree frog. You can hold this one and look at it there. Lit it up close. If there's a cover on it, don't open it. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. We can touch the fish in just a second. Hang on. I'm going to give the fish a... I'm going to give this frog a bath. I'm going to give the frog a bath. Don't look. He's taking a bath. Okay, that was it. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can get up, move around, touch. Look at the turtles, but don't open them. Touch the turtles in there. Touch the fish. Touch the bullfrog. Here it is. After I walk around with the bullfrog, I'm going to bring out the snakes. Here we go. If you want to touch it, come on over. By the way, frogs don't bite unless you stick your finger in their mouth. Same thing's true with the parents. Do you feel like a pickle? Yeah. You can touch it if you want. It feels like a pickle. And this is a boy. He has big eardrums. Look at Rick. He's too many things to look at. Too many things. John Deere. Is your name John Deere? I see that on your sweatshirt. Dinosaur. Very exciting. Hello, Froggy. This is a boy because he has big eardrums. The girl. The girl has a small eardrum. He's got, want to get it in the light here? And look at the gold eyes. If you ever draw a picture of a, yeah, you can touch them. If you ever, if your hands get slimy, wave them on your parents, I mean your pants. Yeah, and I gave him a bath. Frogs are amphibians. They don't carry germs like turtles and snakes, but it's still a good idea to wash your hands. Keep, there's hand sanitizer over there. You could use my baby wipes if anybody needs a baby wipe. You don't have to touch. If you want to touch, you can. Parents can touch if they want to touch. And he started singing last week. That would be amazing if he actually sang while he was holding it. And he's got web feet. See the web feet? He's got web feet for swimming. After I'm done with the bullfrog, the snakes are coming out. You can touch him. Oh, I forgot to tell you, no kissing. Do not kiss the bullfrog. It does not want to be, you know, whatever that is. <laughs> okay, good. We got two, two today. I know Sandy's still here. Of course, she's taking pictures. Sorry, Mom, I'm dropping. It wasn't, it wasn't me. It was nice rainbow shirt. Gonna be a rainbow shining in the sky. Want to take a close-up picture? Hey, I did. Yeah, but I'll <laughs> you can kiss. Thank you. Hey, no kissing, even though it says kiss on your shirt. Yes, that's cool. How are the fish? Are they still alive? Are the fish still alive? Now we might feed that. We're gonna get. Do we have a dead fish? Actually, the turtles don't care whether it's dead or alive. You know, like uh, Tom Petty, dead or alive. We don't care. So if you have a fish. A dead fish over there, we'll give it to the painted turtle and we'll see if the painted turtle will eat it. <laughs> Amphibians have moist skin. Even the toads, they have moisture in their skin. Did everybody touch a frog that wants to? You can touch him if you want to. What kind of frog did you catch? Did you catch the bullfrog or a green frog or a leopard frog? Leopard frogs make a noise like this, a snore. Green frogs sound like this. Bullfrogs sound like this. You can touch that one, sure. Everybody say, no splashing. Did you get a good background? I tried. Here, how about an eagle in the background? <laughs> Everybody say, no splashing. Everybody say, puddles are for splashing. Unless your mom says, don't splash in that puddle. All right, we're going to put the puddle in. Oh, 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 o
Who sees the blue picture? You're probably standing on a picture, a blue picture that the my friend Ron Eckstein took a blue. Who's in that blue picture? There's a black bear in the eagle nest. What? A black bear was found in an eagle nest. All right, are you ready for this? Everybody say, everybody say serpiente. Everybody say culebra. Everybody say bonge. Everybody say zmia. Everybody say bibola. Those are words for snake in other languages. How do you say snake in English? Very nice. Look at this. Everybody back up just a tiny bit. Look where you're going before you fall off the cliff so you don't fall in there. I'm going to take out the first snake coming out is my friend calls it the pumpkin snake. Why would they call it a pumpkin snake? Everybody say it's orange. Everybody make orange and sign. Here we go. Everybody say yellow, orange, red, green, blue, brown, gray. Everybody say focus. Sometimes I lose my focus. Sorry about that. I'm going to bring out the red rat snake. The red rat snake is not native to Wisconsin. My friends call it a pumpkin snake because it's orange. In a pet store, they call it a corn snake. I don't like corn, the name corn snake because they don't eat corn. There are no vegetarian snakes. Everybody say, hello, red rat snake. Don't look, she's taking a bath. Don't look. Stop looking. Can I touch her? Now, wait a minute. Before you touch, oh, 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 yeah. Get up here. Get up here. Can I touch her? Not yet. Who turned out the lights? Who turned out? Why would I put the cold snake on my head? To warm it up. Everybody say, you're a hothead. You're a hothead. Yeah, because my head is warm. I put the snake on my head to warm it up. And also because it's funny. This snake is arboreal. Let's practice language. Everyone say arboreal. That means you climb trees. This snake can climb trees. Now, when you touch it, listen to me. Do not pinch the snake. Please use two fingers. If you touch the snake, do not pinch it. If you pinch the snake, you could break her bones. Everybody feel your ribs. Can't feel mine anymore. This feels like a pillow. You and I got 24 ribs. Snakes have 186 ribs. Snakes have bones. Feel your head. Snakes have skulls. Now, where's the lady said you hold the snake? All right, here's what's gonna happen. We got two snake holding people over here. And I'm, it's okay for the kids to hold the snake if you supervise. One thing you gotta remember, if you have a little ring, like I have this ring around my neck and I hit it because this snake likes to go inside a tunnel, like inside a little ring. If you got a ring on, on your earrings or something, all right, who's holding which one? That was dead, it's coming over here, I'm coming your way. We got time, all right, bring the dead fish over here. The land turtles that you're touching do not eat fish. Unless they do, but they don't. Okay. Who's got the dead fish? Bring it over. Drop it in from the air. Drop it in. Put the dead fish in here. Where's the dead fish? Can you give me that dead fish? Take one shot. Like the bucks. Throw it over here. Actually, Timberwolf beat them bad. Okay. Put it right in this water. There. Oh, that's two. That's three. All right. Now, watch and see. Turtles can smell underwater. Next time you go swimming, do not try that. Turtles can smell underwater. Everybody say, bring out the nighttime snake. This one is a nocturnal snake. It's called a, a ball python. It looks like a boa constrictor. Hey, wait a minute, let me give him a bath. Let me give him a bath. These, these snakes do not live in Wisconsin, except in captivity or in the Not yet, not yet. Don't look, he's taking a bath. All right, here we go, right up in my head. Oh. This snake is called a ball python because when it's afraid, it rolls up in a ball. Is it afraid? How do you know? It's not a ball. But snakes do have teeth. They can bite. Okay, this lady's going to hold this one. So you come over here. We'll just make sure the snakes are separate from each other so the crowd spreads out. Here we go. You can touch these snakes. Come over here, but don't touch that lady. Okay. <laughs> Don't touch it. All right, move around. We got about five more minutes. If you want to touch a fish, touch the turtles. Who wants to hold a tree frog? All right, this is going to be tough. 
but we're going to do it. Why? Because that's why I'm here. All right. Where are the tree frogs? Where's the jar of the tree frogs? Who's got the tree frog jar? Yeah. That's my, that's my gopher. Those who want to help, pick up a turtle shell. Pick up a turtle shell and put them in an orange, yellow box. Over there, can we open up those yellow lids? Can you open up this yellow lid? Here, I'm going to do it over here. See what I mean when I said organized chaos? These turtle shells are going in here. Please put the turtle shells into the bo black boxes at the corners. All the puppets are going to go in one pile. All right, turtle, we got to bring out the front. We got to turn this guy off. The batteries will die. All right, who's ready? All right, here's what's going to happen. We have to be careful because this turtle, this, excuse me, this frog. You got another dead fish? Okay. Uh, no, don't put it in there because is this one eating? Is it eating the fish? And you know what? I didn't clean out the snapper, so you won't see it when you put it in there, so never mind. All right. Get your cameras ready. Spread this blanket out. When the tree frog comes out, if it jumps, I want to know where it is. So we got to be very careful. All right? You need to catch it. You can't walk in front of me. <laughs> All right, turn your fist over like this. Like this. There you go. Check this out. Turn around. Stay right here, though. Stay right here. Don't move. We're going to do one at a time because this is a boy, and he's pretty chunky. You know why? He was eating a lot of crickets. If you want to hold him, you can't, you can't pull your hand back. It feels kind of squishy, but he won't hurt you. I always make a joke. This, this frog ate a person earlier. <laughs> Just kidding. Fletcher, do you want me to hold your hand? Here we go. Oh, okay, careful. Wait, 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 don't move. Don't move. If it gets too jumpy, we'll have to wait. Put your hand up like this. There we go, like this. Who's taking this picture here? Turn around. This girl right here? All right, thanks. Who didn't get a chance? And when you're done, move away. Nice. This, this frog weighs about 300 pounds. Okay, very slow. Hold it very, it's going to be tickly. It's going to be tickly. And then on your hand like this. Help. <laughs> it's so jumpy. It's so jumpy. Yeah. Here we go. Hold still. Hold still. Wow. Peter, put it up right next to your glasses. There you go. So, so, so it doesn't look so big. Did you get it? Did you get some shades? You did good. I have some glasses. Okay, big brother, you want to try this? Oh, yeah. oh keep that picture, Mom. Oh, yeah. oh, he's not he said he wanted to walk on your glasses. Oh, careful, 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 don't go, don't go around. All right. He might. Here's the trade-off. This frog is jumpy. It's always jumpy. In nature, they would be jumpy. Who didn't get a chance that wants to? If you already did it, get out of the way. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming today. Two o'clock today, right in here. Right, Jenny, at two o'clock. Live raptors, please don't touch the frog on his back. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Look at that.